These things are pretty cool. This is a, what is it, a 32.4 Mackie VLC. And I think he paid maybe five or six hundred bucks for it, but they're kind of awesome. I mean, it's got a lot going for it. They've, uh, it's got four buses. Every input has a pad, high pass filter, phantom power, gain, fixed high frequency EQ, two bands of sweep, fixed low, EQ in and out, six auxiliaries, pan, mute, nice little meter, and a bus assignment. So you can assign it to one, two, three, four, or home run it to the left, right main mix. And finally a PFL. Anyway, 100 millimeter faders. These are kind of cool. Used to use a version of this when we first started our company in 1996. And it treated us very well. So let's, let's get to cleaning. You know, I can tell this came out of a church. There's coffee stains everywhere on it. You know, if it was a, a festival mixer, it'd be barbecue sauce, but it's, it's coffee, so we know it was a church. Next step we're gonna do here is I got a little bit of specialized fader lubricant and cleaner. And we're just gonna give these each a little shot of that. Not much, just a little. Now the next thing on the list is all of these connectors here. Um, I'm going to give them a little shot of electronic cleaner and this is fairly aggressive stuff so I'm not going to get carried away with this. I'm just going to do a, a, light, a light little spray. Um, one of the things that can go wrong with these is the inserts have a, a switch in them. Um, they're normally closed and when you push a connector into it, it opens a little little switch in there. And a lot of times those switches will kind of go bad, so, um, well, not really go bad, but they'll just get dirty. So we're going to hit them with a little bit of this. Hopefully that'll clean them up, and then we'll hit all the XLRs too. So when he plugs this thing in, uh, hopefully it'll be noise-free and everything will work. So we'll do that. Alright, so one of the cool things about this mixer is it has um, inserts kind of everywhere. You can insert into the auxiliaries and you can insert into the groups. Um, it has dedicated group outputs. You can insert into the mains. And all of those inserts are useful for if you're using stage monitors here, you can insert EQ into the auxiliaries. And then like your groups, that's where you would insert those compressors to uh, control the dynamics of your band and then your vocals. Or you can also insert independently, like kick drum or bass guitar, or maybe your lead vocal. You might want to do something independent there for an insert. But that's what made these uh, boards super popular. Plus they've got nice balanced outputs and you can kind of run your studio with it too. So these are super popular. They sold. I'm sure tens of thousands of these boards, so you can certainly find one out there somewhere. I just noticed something cool about this. It has a built-in compressor right here. So I would probably use this as a main mix bus compressor with a slow attack and about a 2 to 1 ratio and about a minus 3 threshold and just tickle it 3 dB. Let the kick drum tickle that. And that would be amazing what that would do for your mix. Kind of a 410 auto setting would be amazing, but it doesn't let you do that. So there you go, pretty sweet. One more reason to buy one of these.
Right. I just arrived at my friend Barry's. Barry! Barry! You really do got a face for radio. Nah. <laughs> Today's project is we're going to put together, he's building a studio in his little front room right here. We're going to put that, we're going to help our friend Barry put this together. It's going to be right here. And this is going to be, this is like a podcast studio right it's gonna be my playroom we're gonna do some podcasting we got a huge big giant record collection we got uh lots of friends that have been uh in the radio and music industry for a long long time it's i think it's kind of be kind of fun to sit down and you know play some music and hear their stories and, and uh, just have some fun with it all right let's get to work So this is cool. This is an old, uh, what do you call this, Barry? They call this a cart machine? Because it's on a cart? <laughs> I don't think so, but. 10 and a half inch real Otari two track. Nice. Old school. Back in the day, we used to do all of our commercial editing by using analog tape. So obviously this is a splice block and you can see it's been well used. Oh yeah. So, I mean, we'd line everything up, get a grease pencil, mark your tape where you need to cut it, pull it out, pull the splice block down, put the tape in here and then just make your cuts and edits. Nice. Yeah. That's how we did it back in the day. That's before they had Pro Tools for all you youngsters out there. Yeah, that's when, that's when basically radio broadcasting, anybody that was recording, everything had a pull start. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll drop that cassette deck in there. Uh, let's just throw the Nakamichi in there for now. What is this? All right. So uh, there's been some rumblings that one of these days cassette tapes is going to make a comeback. Oh no! Do you know what this is? That's your comeback kit. This is a nightstand that I've had since I was a freaking kid. And this has just about every mixtape I ever did, uh, and also Lon Martin did. Uh, this so this is like 1980. So we you know used to dub our albums to cassette and then play them in the cars. Sure. Uh, but then I've got like mixtapes. Very all my mixtapes got stolen. I have one by one. I mix the tape. If it gets stolen, that was the roots. Yeah, these are all mixtapes from when I did as a kid. Very nice. Yeah. And they're... Have your first bicycle. I don't have my first bicycle. I think I may still have my first condom, but not bicycle. Has it, has it been used? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's a good thing to keep. You it's in my know. wallet. It's you know dusty and covered in cat hair. You know those time out, right? Exactly. This one and this one, they just sit right up on top of there. And we can put it in the power strip. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna put this road case right in that hole.
Alright, so you see, Barry, here's the thing. Those those 266 XLs, so those are compression and those are kind of nice. And what you can do with those huh? is we can route those like right into these submasters. Okay. And you can use those and I think they'll they'll maybe help your cause. I don't know if that's a true statement or not, but you know what? Will you make me sound better? Will they make me sound better? They'll make you sound different. Oh, there you go. <laughs> they'll keep um, any like if you if you push a little too far on a fader or you drop a needle too hard, they'll kind of soak that up. Yeah. They're, they're, they're just compressors. All right. Um, but they're pretty good ones. And, you know, you own them. So there you go. Well,